Hey, how we doing everyone? Today we have another wonderful video, external storage. Yes, I'm gonna show you in this video how to hook up an external hard drive, USB thumb drive to any Android TV box, MSQ, MSQ Pro, MSA, and all the X and Y and Z. Check this video, it will help you to resolve a lot of the problems and I think also it's going to answer a lot of the questions you have in on the external storage so I hope you guys enjoy this video as you see in the video right now that's the box I'm going to be using MX Q Pro 4k so what we're going to do now we're going to go into local file browser we see the local disk and that's actually internal storage for all your downloads Okay, that's what you want to, if you download in anything, that's what you want to go to and delete it. I don't want to install it right now. And these are all your pictures and everything. Everything is internal memory on the MXQ Pro. Or any other uh, Plus or MSA, any Android TV box. All right. So what we're going to do now, we're going to install, and this is a genetic, 4 gig USB drive I mean USB thumb drive we're gonna plug in so pay attention let's go here on the screen so pay attention right over here very important first when you get one of these drive form and window NTFS I think it normally comes FAT32 and I'm gonna go this over later on to show you and you see right over there, it automatically detected with no problem. It should detect it by default. You don't need to do anything special. Make sure when you got one of those drive, if you get information, back it up or move it to your computer and then format your drive. NTFS, you're gonna go to Windows and then I don't have to go and show you how to do that. We just go into Windows or Mac in format NTFS because normally it has a FAT32 partition that's the way they have these things so let's look, look over let's see what we got inside the drive and right now I downloaded two applications you can download as many applications you want and from here you can install it if I want to install Cori I just click on it and I install Cori okay so if you're gonna download any add-ons plugins any application you look on the net, you can download every, make easy for you. You download everything your uh, Windows machine or your Mac or your your Vantage machine. Download everything, then you copy it over to this device, plug it here, and you got it right over there. And that seems to work okay, no problem, right? Okay, so you says now, you know what? I have a bigger hard drive not I do have an external hard drive well there's two things you need to have in mind let's keep it here and I'll show you another one this drive is a 250 gig drive uh, two and a half portable I think I paid about $50 about two years ago this is a cheap genetic drive okay, from China and they use the USB, you see the LED right there. So we're gonna remove this. We're gonna plug this into the side. This way to detect it here. Let's cancel this. All right, now, this drive, there is no power connection. There's no power connection. So this is being powered through the USB. It's been, it requires power from this box to power this hard drive. Okay, so, and these are the cable, standard USB cable. But we see in this case, this one has a two, like a Y connector. Let, let me let me show you here. It's a Y connector. So we got two, sorry for the shot. I gotta get a better camera for this. Okay, and then we got this to the dry. Okay, this one, 
it's supposed to be for an external source. So if you want it power the drive, this drive come with a little power supply. But sometimes you got drive, they don't come with any external power source or either uh, one a connector or a mini jack to power up the drive. So what we're going to do, we're going to play again. I'm going to do what most of people tend to do. And I'm going to use an external power and we're going to plug the drive. So let's pay attention to the light and you see it's going to take a while. Let's look at the two screens and really detect it. Okay. We got to wait to get mounted. It's going to take a little longer. You see it's flicking there. Okay, it's getting there now. And already detect it. Now, press V. Now, it shows a partition one. Okay, now when you plug in your Windows machine, you're going to see your drive. But when you plug into the device, you're going to see partition one. And I think you can only see up to like four terabytes. If you go more than four terabytes, you're going to have to partition. I didn't try that personally. I don't have any bigger drive. So you guys let me know if you're trying any bigger drive. This is 250 gigs. Again, when you plug into your Windows machine, if I take this and plug in my Windows machine, you're not going to see this partition one. You're going to see just the regular drive. So we're going to click on it. And I just copy a picture. Okay. Just a purpose to show you this. I guess you want to put MP3s. You can put anything you want. Now, it seems to work all okay. But the problem is this drive requires current. The box requires current too. And the power supply, if I remember, was only two amps. So you gotta you need to power the box and power my my keyboard as well. Well they say this doesn't take milliamps. But then I start playing a game. The boxes start consume more power. It's not gonna be enough. The power, the power supply is gonna be enough to power your drive, and that's when problem starts. People say my drive appears, then my drive disappears. I have to reboot the machine because they're for a little bit and not there anymore. That's because it requires an external power because the high drive is not enough power from this box, not from the box, actually from the power supply. To be able to power ball drive because you start playing games, you start watching movies, this gets warm, it requires more power from the power supply, so power supply is gonna handle it, and then you, sooner or later this drive dies on you. And what happened here, you're gonna lose your drive. So what I can do now, I can go and plug this into external power supply on uh, another USB hub. Okay, another that has maybe, you know, 10 amp or whatever. Or you buy a drive, they already have, like I always say, you need to get with the external power source. You have some of the three and a half drive, we have the own power supply in those works great. And again, I think I see a message there, somebody asked me, you know, I take the power off of my, my uh, box and it's still on. Why? My my um, my box is not going off. Well, because now the box is being powered up through USB and I'm going to try this. Let me see if so we can do this. I'm going to actually power the box. I have a little hub here. So I'm going to plug it there. This is everything is still working. Okay. Now let's see what happens. We're going to remove the power Okay, pay attention to both screens. I'm going to take the power out of the box. Look at this, Chun. What happened? Magic. You see? No more power. The box is still working. I'm, I'm here. Let's go back. We see the two drive. But what I did, I mean power from external power source. This is actually, I think, a two, two, two amps from this hub. It has its own power supply where I power all my uh, window devices. So what I'm doing now, I'm power the hard drive. In the same time, I'm powering the box. So now people try to shut down the box. There's no way to shut the box off because you're getting power today. So... You're going to have to take the power off 
this, and then we're going to lose everything now. If I take this out for a second, and then we look to the screen, everything should be gone. Gone. And actually, I can power the drive through here. So this way. And we see it's coming up. And I'm, I'm not using any power. So what I mean to this is, is I see user ask me about what I said before. If you're going to use an external power source, you're going to have a high drive with their own power supply. You're going to power the box. We'll have in mind if the drive is on, your box is going to be on. Okay, you're going to have to to the switch off on this a three and a half drive case and then you can take the power off of your box i mean my boxes are never shut off so i really don't care maybe you want to show your hard drive because it stays on all the time and and it gets warm and maybe lose you later i don't know my computer is always on i mean hard drive then to last for a long time but if you're concerned so all right so remember if you need to use external power supply, my recommendation, get, get high drive with external power supply. It's going to work better. You're not going to have it off and on, high drive, loosen your drive out. But if you have an external power supply, let's imagine this is, is the power of, of the drive. You're going to be powering the box. Okay? And if you are, now, let's see now this. See? We still have everything on. If you're gonna power your uh, your box to a, a two and a half drive, when you take the power here, everything dies, and then you have to wait. So, guys, if you, if you want to try, I will say try three and a half with this self power, a two and a half with of self power. If you get a lot of drive, you don't want to spend the money. You set and see how it works. But see, I have a lot of questions there. I mean, a lot of people ask me questions why I have those problems and, and that's why uh, another thing I would recommend you to use and I'm going to put a you're going to see a link on the description to my website and you guys can download it if you don't have it you don't need to look it into the Google Play Store you can just download it into your drive and then through into your system it's called ES File Explorer I recommend it if you want to uh, see better files and naturally we can see now the size okay so here we see this the first drive where it's a 223 gigabytes at 250 and this is my little drive and 372 gigabytes and we see some of these files here okay we see some of the files there so it's a good thing it works real good you can even uh, you can even connect to the network. I can search from a LAN, and it will search actually. It will search uh, as you see. It's already finding some of my uh, uh, network devices, so you can connect to FTP. It has little good things to if you guys try to move the copy files. One thing I do not recommend it to use. If they give me a problem once, if you click analyzer or clean, there is a. a, a this will analyze it and then clean. Uh, be careful when you hit the clean because it will delete some of the Kodi files. And then you're gonna say, why my code is no longer working? Well, that's because you execute clean. So now if you use it for Kodi, I do not recommend to hit the, the clean application or the analyzer. Uh, do not use none of these things. Only purpose of you this, if I wanna to connect to my network, move copy files, copy files through Windows, so it's a good application. So will be a link on in, uh, in the description to my website and you guys can download it. So guys, if you got any questions or anything, please let me know. If you guys got to know anything better, help the community by just posting uh, a message. Thank you. Bye.